Hello boys and girls, and welcome to another incredible day of SeaKids Virtual Online Hebrew School. Today we will be learning all about our journey from slavery to freedom. And we got so much to learn, and we don't have so much time. But before we start, I want to tell you guys about three incredible competitions where you can win awesome prizes. The first is you will find on the website a daily mission to fill out all the way until Passover. Every time you fill out those missions, you will get yourselves into a raffle for some incredible, amazing prizes. Competition number two is the Great Manishtana. Now, boys and girls, what you need to do is you need to record a video of yourself saying the Manishtana and then send it in. All the information, again, is on the website. You can get your parents to help you with this. When you do this, you'll be sending in the information and the video. You'll get a chance to go into a raffle for incredible, amazing, fantastic prizes like a drone, a skateboard, a gift card. It can all be won by you guys, but you got to take that video and you got to make sure that you send the video in that you can be part of the Great Manish Tana. And the third competition is called Sea Kids Got Talent. Each grade has their own incredible competition that they got to do. Again, please look on the website under the Sea Kids Got Talent. You have until this Tuesday, 7 p.m. That's Tuesday, March 31st, until 7 p.m. to send in your Sea Kids Got Talent and the Great Manish Tana program. If you do that, you have a chance to win it. So ask after Hebrew school today, ask mom and dad to help you. Send in those videos, send in those projects, and you could be a winner. Okay, I think it's time to go into class. Boys and girls, at the end of your class today, I want you to enter the answers in the form below. You will have a chance to enter in the raffle to be the winner and announce on next week's virtual Hebrew school. But at the end of class today, we will be announcing the winners of last week's competition. So make sure you stay tuned for the winners. Oh, hi there. Rabbi B here. I'm just getting ready for Pesach. You know, my house is almost clean. I've gotten rid of all the chametz and all the bread products are put away. And now I'm just getting my last final touches, picking up some last pieces of Lego in my Lego box over here. And I'm just gonna finish sweeping up. Doo -doo -doo. And there we go, nice and done. Oh, I think I hear somebody buzzing around. Oh. Oh, oh, hi, Devora the Bee. Hello, Devora. Oh, come on, you can land on my shoulder there. There you go. Looks like Devora, you been have you been working very hard cleaning up for Pesach? No. Oh, Devora is even cleaning my heart, my shoulder for Pesach. <laughs> I don't think there's any chametz up there right now. Oh, Devora, you look very, very tired. Are you very tired? Oh man, Devora's very tired from all the cleaning for Pesach she's doing. And me too, you know, Devora is a worker bee. And so am I, I'm a worker bee too, working hard. Well, Devora, bye bye Have a good time cleaning your hive from all the chametz, even though I don't think there's much chametz in a beehive. Oh, she got her broom. Okay, bye Devora, bye bye <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun. Okay, just gonna finish up cleaning up. I think I'm all done. And now I just gotta take the last little bit of Lego here to back to the Lego box. Well, I'll see. Whoa! Oh. Happy Pesach from Rabbi B. Oh. The holiday of Pesach has two very important themes the past and the present. In the past, we were slaves to King Pharaoh, and Hashem does not want us to forget that. That's why every year on Pesach, for two nights, we have something called a Seder. And at the Seder, we talk about how we used to be slaves in Egypt. Because remembering that we were slaves maybe makes us treat other people a lot better if we were never slaves in the first place. We can remember how hard it was and how life was very difficult. And maybe we can have more love and compassion for other people who maybe have hard and difficult lives too in our days. Of course, Pesach also celebrates the, the present, which is happening right now. We're free and we have freedom to do whatever we, we want to do. And of course, Pesach reminds us that coming out of Egypt was in order to go and get the Torah. Now, of course, 
We have freedom, but our freedom as Jewish people means freedom to do Torah and mitzvahs. So I think we should sing a song together all about some of my favorite mitzvahs of the Torah. And it goes like this. Will be wallaby witzvos. Let's sing a song about mitzvos. Will be wallaby wara. Mitzvos come from the Torah. All right, if you know the word, the rhyming word, I want you to say it at home. Okay, here we go. Will be wallaby wazuza. On my door I have a mezuzah. Good. Will be wallaby wadaka. With my money I can give sedaka. You guys are good at mitzvahs. Will be wallaby wosher. I like to eat food that is kosher. Will be wallaby wacha. When I eat, I try to say a bracha. You're good. Do you know your brachot? Will be wallaby wabat. On Friday night, it starts Shabbat. Will be wallaby wandles. My mother lights the candles. I hope your mother does too. Will be wallaby wofar. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shofar. Will be wallaby wuka. On Sukkot, we sit in a sukkah. Will be wallaby winora. On Hanukkah, we light the menorah. Will be wallaby watza. And on Pesach, we eat matzah. I knew that you knew that one. Oh, will be wallaby wens. It's a mitzvah to be friends. Will be wallaby whamily, also to love your family. Will be wallaby one, mitzvahs are a lot of fun. Oh, will be wallaby wong, and that's the end of the song. <laughs> you guys are really good at doing all those mitzvahs. I hope you keep doing those mitzvahs because that's our freedom to show that we can do any mitzvah we like to do, like giving tzedakah, keeping kosher, kissing a mezuzah, davening, learning, so many mitzvos. I hope you get to do all of them. Have yourself a wonderful mitzvah day. Ha <laughs> ha. hayinu, hayinu. Leparo bi mitzrayim, bi mitzrayim. Avadim hainu Ata ata b'nei chorin, b'nei chorin Avadim hainu Ata ata b'nei chorin, b'nei chorin We were slaves, now we are free This is a part of our Jewish history we were slaves, you and me. Hashem took us out, and now we are free. We were slaves, you and me. But Hashem took us out, and now we are free. Avadim hayinu, hayinu. Leparo bimitzrayim, bimitzrayim. Avadim hayinu. Ata ata b'nei chorin, b'nei chorin. Avadim hayinu. Ata ata b'nei chorin, b'nei chorin. Ata ata b'nei chorin, b'nei chorin. Avadim Hayinu is a prayer found in the Haggadah. It's found right after the Manishtana. This is because the Avadim Hayinu answers the questions of the Manishtana. When the Manishtana asks, why do we eat maror, and why do we dip the karpas in salt water, and the maror in charoset, the answer is Avadim Hayinu, because we were slaves. And the questions, why do we eat matzah, and why do we lean to the left, the answer is Atha b'nei chorin, because now we are free. So the Avadim Hayinu is the answer for the Manishtana. You know, I have a friend who is deaf. He is not able to hear with his ears at all. Instead, I can speak to him using my hands and fingers. It's called sign language. And he taught me how to sing Avadim Hayinu using sign language. There's five words in the song. Avadim Hayinu. Ata b'nei chorin. Avadim hayinu, we were slaves. Ata b'nei chorin, now we are free. 
So the words are like this, avadim, you rub your hands and your fists rather together like this, like your hands are tied up in chains or shackles. Avadim, and then hayinu was, we were, we were slaves. So now we take our thumbs and we point them behind us. So it's avadim, hayinu, hayinu. Next words, ata, now. Now, I don't think you can point down for now because that might mean down. So we're going to go like this. Take our pinky and our thumb and stick them out sideways. And we're going to go ata, like that. Ata. And then bnei chorin, if this was avadim, slaves, bnei chorin, they break free. So bnei chorin. Ata bnei chorin. Let's try the whole song together using sign language. Avadim hayinu hayinu. Ata bnei chorin bnei chorin. Avadim hayinu. Ata ata bnei chorin bnei chorin. Avadim. Hainu ata ata bene chorin bene chorin. Now let's do the whole song, but without using our words, just our hands. One, two, three. Ata ata bene chorin, now we are free. Try it yourself at your own Seder. Teach your family how to sing Avadim Hayinu in English, in Hebrew, and now in sign language. Bechol dor vador chayav adam lirot Et atzmo ki ilu hu yatsa mimitzrayim in every generation, a person should believe that Hashem will take him out of Gullah speedily. All right, let's try it a little bit faster now. Bechol dor vador chayav adam lirot et atzmo ki ilu mitzrayim. In every generation, a person should believe that Hashem will take him out of Gullah speedily. Okay, a little bit faster now. Bechol dor vador chayav adam lirot Et atzmo ki ilu hu yatsami mitzrayim In every generation a person should believe That Hashem will take him out of Gullah speedily Okay, super fast! Bechol dor vador chayav adam lirot Et atzmo ki ilu hu yatsami mitzrayim In every generation a person should believe That Hashem will take him out of Gullah speedily Okay, that was way too fast. Let's slow it down a bit. Bechol dor vador chayav adam lirot Et atzmo ki ilu hu yatsa mimitzrayim In every generation a person should believe That Hashem will take us out of Galus speedily Anishtana halayla haze Mikol haleilot Mikol haleilot Shebechol haleilot Anu ochlin chametz u matza Chametz u matza Halayla haze halayla haze Kulo matza Halayla haze halayla haze Kulo matza Ma nishtana halayla haze Mikol haleilot Mikol haleilot Shebechol haleilot Anu ochlin she'ar yirakot She'ar yirakot 
הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מרור, מרור. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, מרור, מרור. מה נשתנה הלילה הזה מכל הלילות, מכל הלילות, שבכל הלילות אין אנו מטבילין אפילו פעם אחת, אפילו פעם אחת. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, שתי פעמים. מה נשתנה הלילה הזה מכל הלילות, מכל הלילות, שבכל הלילות אנו אוכלים בין יושבין ובין מסובין, בין יושבין ובין מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. הלילה הזה, הלילה הזה, כולנו מסובין. I have ten pictures here, five of which have to do with freedom, and five of which have to do with slavery. Do you know which ones have to do with freedom? Do you think the matzah has to do with freedom? You're right. We ate matzah as we came out of Egypt. Matzah reminds us of our freedom. All right, what picture reminds us of freedom? Do you think the man leaning to the left reminds us of freedom? You're right. When we lean at the Seder, that reminds us that we are free and we can eat like free, rich people. Very good. What other picture has to do with freedom? You think the girl dancing has to do with freedom? You're right. She is dancing because she is showing she is free and happy. And people who are free enjoy happiness and joyful things. People who are slaves are not happy and can't make their own decisions. Good job. What other picture here has to do with freedom? Do you think the people dancing with the Torah and the flags has to do with freedom? You're right. When we came out of Egypt, we got the Torah. And that gives us freedom to do Torah and mitzvot and serve Hashem. Great job! Now there's one more picture here that has to do with freedom. Nope, not the man carrying the bricks. That's a slave. Nope, not the haroset. That reminds us of the bricks that we built when we were in Egypt. No, they're dipping karpas in salt water. That reminds us of the tears we cried when we were in Egypt as slaves. No, that's the bitter maror. That's the bitter food that we eat to remind us of the bitter life we had in Egypt. And no, that's a chain that's together. That reminds us of being chained up like a slave. Oh, you're right. Showing the broken chains. Breaking the chain means setting us free and letting us go free out of Egypt and to Har Sinai to get the Torah and then to serve Hashem with freedom. You're right. Now here are five pictures that are not about freedom, about slavery. Let's flip them over and see what we can see. Oh, it's a puzzle. Can you put it together and see what picture it is? Hmm, let's start with this one. That's a picture. It looks like there's somebody whipping somebody. Okay, let's add another piece to the puzzle. Oh, there's a man on the floor. Oh, and here are some people all running away, getting scared. And it looks like they're somewhere with blue skies and they're building something. And, oh, it's a picture of slavery, which means all five of those pictures were about slavery. What about our five pictures of freedom? Do they have something on the back? Hmm, there's another picture. Let's see if we can put this picture together. Hmm. Looks like there's someone standing up on a rock or something. 
and there's a whole bunch of people there, and a sunny sky, and right in the middle, oh, it looks like the splitting of the sea, Kriya Yamsuf. That's when we came out of Egypt and we were free. We finally crossed the sea and Hashem closed it on the Egyptians and we were finally free to go to Har Sinai to receive the Torah from Hashem. You are really good at this game. Uh-oh, Rabbi B is not ready for Pesach. He has to get the table set. Can he do it in 20 seconds? Here he goes. <laughs> Phew, ha, ah, so much work getting ready for Pesach. Well, I have all the things I'm gonna need. Oh, I think I hear somebody. Oh, hello, Devora. hello there. Oh, happy Pesach to you too. Well, it's not yet Pesach, just yet. We're just getting ready for Pesach. What's that? Oh, what's all the stuff on the table? Devora wants to know what all these things are for. Well, Devora, we have lots of things for Pesach. For example, we have matzah. This is the matzah here, you wanna see the matzah? Yeah, that's matzah. Oh, don't have a taste yet. We try not to eat any matzah until Pesach time. That way, it's snoo and exciting. Yeah, but that's matzah. That's made out of flour and water and it's baked very, very fast. So it's nice and flat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds us of when we came out of Egypt a long, long time ago. The bread didn't have time to rise. So we have matzah. Yeah. What's that? Which one? Oh, on the, this is the Seder plate. Yeah. On the Seder plate, there's all kinds of things. There's karpas, which we dip in salt water. That's right, that's the karpas we dip. What's that, why salt water? Oh, we have salt water to remember the tears from when we were in Mitzrayim. That's right, very good memory. Yeah, so that's the karpas. I think I put this puzzle in the right way, karpas. And then we have a bone, a special bone called the zeroa. And that's to remind us about a long time ago, Hashem wanted us to bring, eat a very special type of lamb for Pesach. Yeah, so it reminds us about that. And we have an egg. The egg reminds us also about a special food we were supposed to eat a long, long time ago in the Beit HaMikdash. So these things are all to remind us about things. Oh, you want to know about which one? Oh, in the bottom here, the maror or the chazeret. Yeah, maror, it's very, very bitter. You can have a taste if you like. Oh, are you very sad? Oh, it's, it's very bitter because it reminds us about our bitter lives in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, a long, long time ago. That's right, we were slaves a long time ago and we have a Pesach Seder to remember that Hashem took us out and made us free. Yeah. Any other questions? Which one? Oh, the, the one over there, the grape juice? Oh, the grape juice and the wine. Yeah, well, we drink four cups of wine for Pesach. That's right. We drink, why four? Oh, we have four cups because there were four words Hashem used when he took us out of Mitzrayim. All right, welcome back to the Pesach Family Feud game. We have today our contestant, Moshe. Moshe, are you ready for the fast money round? Yep. All right, top four answers are on the board. If you were Hashem, what word would you use to say you're going to take the Jewish people out of Egypt? Hmm. I would say that I will save them. I will save them. Let's see if I will save them is on the board. Oh, number two answer. Well done. Way to go. Okay. We got three more to go to get the top four answers to win the grand prize. Do you have another word you would use to take the Jews out of Egypt? Um, I would say that I would take them out of Egypt. That you would take them out of Egypt. Let's see if I will take them out of Egypt is on the board. Whoa, number four answer. Way to go. Wow, he's on a good roll. That's two answers so far. Looking for two more. Other words you would use if you were Hashem to take the Jews out of Egypt. Um, I'm going to redeem them. I will redeem them. Let's see if I will redeem them is on the board. Whoa, number three answer. Well done. He's got three out of four. Number one answer is still on the board. Moshe, think about it. Number one answer still waiting for you. 
What word would you use if you were Hashem to tell the Jews you're going to take them out of Egypt? Mm, I'm going to remove them? That you're going to remove them. Let's check it on the board if I'm going to remove them is on the board. Whoa, number one answer. Wow, way to go. That was amazing. All four answers are on the board. Let's take a look at them again. Vehotsesi, and I will remove them. Vehitsalti, I will save them. Vehgaalti, I will redeem them. And Vehlokachti, I will take them. Well, that's all the time we have for Pesach Family Feud. Well done, Moshe, our champion for today. Boys and girls, I hope next time you're the champion, too, on the Pesach Family Feud. All right, back to our regular scheduled programming. That's right, the four special words that Hashem used, and those are, to, the four cups are to remind us of those four special words. Very good. And this book here, oh, that's the Haggadah Shal Pesach. That's a special Haggadah we use on Pesach. That's right. And that's the Haggadah we use to read from all the special parts of the Seder. That's right, so this is all part of the Seder. Oh, and this bag, this is a fun bag. This is called the Afikoman. Yeah, we put a piece of matzah. What we do in the Seder is we're going to take a piece of matzah and we're going to break it in half. Can you help me break it in half? One, two, three. There we go. Good job. You can put that one. We'll put this one under the table, under the, under the, pesach, the matzah cover. And, hey, Devora, where'd you go? I need that matzah. That's my afikoman. <laughs> afikoman is the special dessert matzah. We're going to take this afikoman bag and we're going to hide it somewhere. Devora, will you hide it somewhere in the video? Okay. And boys and girls who are watching, you can go and look and find the afikoman somewhere in this video. It's hiding somewhere. I want to see if you can find it. Well, oh, well, I guess Devora is going to hide it. Well, bye-bye, Devora. And bye-bye, boys and girls. Hope you guys are... Oh, there you are. Did you hide it? Oh, good. I'm so excited. Devora hid the afikoman. Keep your eyes open. You never know where it's going to be. All right. Well, let's start getting ready more for Pesach. How about a nice Pesach song? Manishtana halayla hazeh mikol halay. March out of Egypt, march with me. March out of Egypt and you will see. Hashem took us out and now we're free. March out of Egypt with me. Hop out of Egypt, hop with me. Hop out of Egypt and you will see. Hashem took us out and now we're free. Hop out of Egypt with me. Skip out of Egypt, skip with me. Skip out of Egypt and now you'll see. Hashem took us out and now we're free. Skip out of Egypt with me. Dance out of Egypt, dance with me. Dance out of Egypt and you will see. Hashem took us out and now we're free. Dance out of Egypt with me. Well, from Rabbi B and Devora the B, we want to wish you a very Chag Kosher Vesameach, a very happy and kosher Pesach. Because on Pesach, we make sure not to eat any chametz, and we make sure all the food is kosher for Pesach. And always remember, don't work too hard. Make sure you enjoy the holiday. Don't become a slave to Pesach. Let Pesach work for you. You can be free and do all the mitzvahs of Pesach that you can do. Now it's time to go over to Rabbi Beryl for some fun Pesach games. Take it over, Rabbi Beryl. Rabbi B, you are yeah Amazing! Moving on to today's game show. You get ready with a pen and a paper or some way to take down your score. We'll give you a moment for that. We're going to start with our first game today, the game of Zoom. This game works as follows. On the screen there's going to be a picture that's zoomed really close, just a piece of the picture you see, you won't see the whole thing. You'll have to guess what that picture is. Are we ready? You'll have just a few seconds to guess, make sure you scream it out loud so you, we know that you got it right and then you get your points. For the first picture it is as follows. You'll have just a few seconds to guess what it is. If you know what it is, shout it out loud. If you don't know, don't worry, we'll give you a little closer hint. What do you think that is? Okay, if you said it, you got your points. If not, you don't now. What do you think it is? 
Now, if you said Maror, give yourself 10 points or host radish. If you did not, hold it on. We're going on to our next round of Zoom. And here we go. What is that? Now, if you said matzah, you are not correct. Wait, try to get something else. It's not matzah. What is it? Okay, hold it. We're going to zoom in a little bit. A zoom out, I mean, what is that? Okay, hold it there. It is a matzah pillow. Many people use a pillow at the Seder to lean on for comfort because we lean during the Seder. If you said matzah pillow, get, give yourself 10 points. If not, move on to our next one. What? I didn't hear you. Say it. If you know it, say it. Okay, we'll zoom out just a little bit. Let's see if you got it. Now you guys should get it. And the answer is, of course, a carton of eggs. We have an egg on the Seder plate at our Seder. If you said eggs, 10 points it is. And moving on to our next one. Okay, this one should work for everyone. Say it out loud. We'll give you a little more space there. And of course, it's the four cups of wine at the Seder. If you said wine or cups of wine, 10 points for you. And moving on to our next one. And it is very challenging. Something interesting? You're not sure what it is? Say it out loud if you know what it is. All right, we'll zoom out a little bit. What is that? Okay, hold it there. If you said it, you get your 20 points. It is a cement mixing truck. We eat the charosa at the Seder, which is on the Seder plate, which reminds us of the cement and the bricks that the Jewish people made in Egypt. Of course, hence the cement mixing truck. If you said that, Cement mixing truck. You get 20 points. If not, hold it on. We're going on to our next one and final item. Huh? What is that? Say it out loud if you know it. All right, moving out. Say it out loud. And it is, of course, for 10 points for you, a crown. We are kings and princes or princesses at the Seder table while we, while we lean the very opposite of, of slaves. If you said a crown, give yourself 10 points for that. And moving on to our next round of Seder Play Boss. If you think you know your Seder plate items, let's go through it really quick so you are well prepared for this round of Seder plate boss. At our Seder plate, we have six items on the plate. Of course, tons of meaning in each one of these items. That's why they're very specific, what we put on our Seder plate, and they are as follows. We've got the shank bone or a bone. We've got the egg. We've got the maror or the bitter herbs in the middle. We've got the haroset, which is a mix of fruit and nuts, similar to that, that mortar, that bricks and, and cement. We have the parsley, or it can be an onion or a potato, which we dip into salt water. And then finally, we got the romaine lettuce, or the chazeret, at the very bottom. Remember these six items, and we're going to test you if you can remember what they are. Now, of course, we're going to get rid of your cheat sheet first. We'll move that out. We're going to give you 20 points for this round. You're gonna close your eyes when I say go and wait for the sound. As soon as you hear that sound, you open your eyes and you'll have to tell me within just a few seconds, what did I take away from that Seder plate? I'm gonna remove just one item. Scream it out loud because as soon as I say it, you have no more chance to guess. All right, close your eyes now, listen for that sound. Now open your eyes. What is missing from the Seder plate? Just have a few seconds, scream it out if you know it. You can say what it is, just scream it out. And the answer is, of course, the charoset, that mix of fruits and nuts. If you said that, you give yourself 20 points. If not, moving on, close those eyes and wait for the sound. Eyes closed. Open your eyes, what is missing at the Seder plate? What is missing? Give us that, what is it? Call it out. If you said chazeret or the romaine lettuce, you get 20 points. If not, Moving on to our next one, close those eyes. Listen for the sound, keep your eyes closed. What's missing? Give us, what is it, what is that? What's the thing missing? You got it, you can do this thing, call it out. And it's of course the 
shank bone or the bone. If you said shank bone or bone or chicken bone or anything of that sort, give yourself 20 points and we're moving on to our next round. The Seder Charader. If you've played charades before, you should be awesome at this game. This is similar to charades. However, it's gonna be a Seder related charade that's gonna be put over here. Someone is going to act out, a volunteer, something related to the Seder. If you know what it is, call it out. Are we ready? This first one is worth 10 points. We're gonna first call out my sister, Tivia. Tivia, come on up. You're gonna give us the first Seder charade. Watch carefully. Tivia, you're gonna do this. Watch carefully. If you know what it is, scream it out loud. And of course, the answer for 10 points is drinking four cups of wine. Tivia, that was amazing. Give yourself 10 points if you got it. Moving on to our next one. Are you ready for this one? It's also 10 points. And it goes as follows. a vegetable into salt water. If you said that, another 10 points to you. Tivia, thank you so much. We're gonna call my, another one of my sisters, Tilla. Come on up, Tilla, for our next 10 points at the Seder Schrader. You ready for this? What was that? What was that? If you say, say it out loud, you know it. And of course it is crunching on Mata. Okay, you ready for your next one? 10 points here. Ooh, that was a tough one. I think we're gonna raise this to 20 points. This is super hard. It was not going to 7-Eleven. Something else. What was it? Say it a lot if you know it. It's a toughie. And of course the answer is, Something we do at the Seder. Say it out loud. If, if you can get it now, just say it. You're getting 20 points for this one. And the answer is telling over the story of Exodus. I saw that. That was great. Great job. Thank you so much, Silla. Now we're moving on to our next round of trivia. We love trivia. Everyone loves trivia. Let's see if you guys can get these ones right. A question is going to come up on the board. I'm going to give you four possible answers to answer that question. If you know it, call it out loud, and you will get, for this question, our first question, 10 points. We ready? And the first question is, at the Seder, we drink four cups of what? Answer one, hot cocoa, steaming. Coke, of course. Olive oil, the best. Or, wine or grape juice, what's the answer? Call it out loud if you know it, and the answer, of course, is wine or grape juice. If you got that right, give yourself 10 points. If not, moving on to our next 20-point question. 20 points, it's a good one. Listen closely, and the question is, what do we do at the Seder while we drink our wine or grape juice and eat matzah? What do we do? Do we lean to our left? Do we sing, die, die, you know? Do we close our eyes? Or do we secretly look for the afikom? If you know it, say it out loud, and the answer, of course, is... Uh, you gotta say the answer anymore. The answer is, we lean to our left while we drink wine and eat the matzah at the Seder. That was 20 points. Moving on to our next question, and this question is, again, a 20-point question. Listen closely. Why do we lean at the Seder? Why? Good question. One is, it's an act. It, it shows that we're free. It's good for digestion. It's like leaning on our friends. It's a sign of unity together. Or finally, as Baya leaned over the river to take baby Moshe from the basket. Which one is it? Say it out if you know it. I, get, I bet you guys know this one. It's 20 points. And the answer, of course, is it's a sign of freedom. We see, sit back like kings and queens, princesses and princes at the center table. Going on to our next question. That was a 20-point question. And this is a 30-point question. I don't think you know this one. This is not something that you learned today, I don't think. But you may know it. Use that. Anything you got in the back of that brain, scratch it out, bring it forward, and give us what you got. And the question is, what is matzah called? Hmm. What 
is matzah called? And the answers are either bread of faith. It's called king crunch. It's called bread of the teeth. Or it's called bread of healing. Again, is it bread of faith, king crunch, bread of the teeth, or bread of healing? And what is the answer? Say it aloud if you know it. And the answer is the 30-point question here. And the answer is both bread of faith and bread of healing. If you said both, give me a 60 points. Each one's worth 30 on their own. And you are. Put down your scores. That's amazing. This was a toughie. We're moving on to our next and I think maybe final question. And the question is a 20-point question. And the question is, during which season does Pesach always come around. This is not a question you learned today, but it's a good one to know. Which season is it always? It's a tricky. Listen closely. Is it always during fall? Is it always during the summer? Is it always during spring? Or depending on the year, could be different seasons. What do you think it is? Say it a lot if you know it. And the answer is, of course, always in the springtime. It says explicitly in the Torah. And we're moving on to... How did you score? Count up those scores. You, now is your chance to put those... Put those tens, twenties, thirties together. Count that score. It's not a math quiz right now, but you gotta put those numbers together to see how you scored today for today's game show. Put those numbers together and we'll see where you ranked. And here we go. Today, if you scored between 20 and 70, you are a beginner. You've got lost learn, but that's great. If you score between 80 and 150, you're intermediate. These were really tough questions, really tough challenges, and you did amazing. And if you score between 160 and 260, you are a pro. Thank you so much for joining us today's game show. And moving on to Mora Mushki. Thank you very much. Whee! Thank you, Rabbi Beryl. That was so much fun. And now, get ready to do some really awesome crafts. My name is Mushki from Honor Roll Crafts and I just love crafting. So, I don't even think I have to explain to you so much what we are doing today because I think you can tell. Yup, you guessed it. These are three really special things that will go on your Seder table. Here we have a beautiful Seder plate, we have a coast for Eliyahu Hanavi, and we have a salt water bowl. Now you may be thinking, wow, are you an artist? Did you paint all that? No, 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 there is a trick. I did not paint anything. This is all decorated with regular napkins. Do you have any beautiful decorative napkins at home waiting for the Pesach Seder, or just some extra lying around? That's all you are going to need for this activity. You are going to need a plastic or glass plate for the kara. You could choose one. You could do all of them. You could make a set, whatever you're in the mood of. You can use a plastic or glass cup and then a plastic or glass bowl. They all work amazing. You are going to also need the printouts that we sent you. You have two choices, the Seder plate labels that look like this, the Seder plate labels that look like that, and then for the Coast Shell Eliyahu and the salt water. We have different labels right over here. You will also need a pair of scissors to cut out the napkins and Mod Podge or regular glue works as well. And of course, napkins, or even if you have tissue paper, this is um, gift wrapping paper, whatever you would like to use, and then to jazz it up with something a little extra, if you have any trimming, any sequins, even puff paint would work, anything that you can find around the house. So, I'm going to start with choosing my napkin. I actually keep it in this file box, because I have a lot. I actually have like 10 of these boxes. So here, this is the one I'm going to choose. I'm going to take it, 
Now, I don't know if you've ever examined your napkins, but if you open up your napkins, they have usually three layers. The first one comes off so easily. And then you think, okay, I got it, no more layers. But then there's usually one that's kind of sticking to the top. You're going to gently, gently pull it away. Ah, you got it. Here, I have a nice thin layer. This is going to be the napkin I'm going to use today. Look how pretty. Now you can choose. Do I want it going over the rim, over the whole thing, or do I want it just around the bottom circle? But before you do that, this is not just a regular plate. This is your Ka'ara symbolizing freedom at our table. So you are going to cut out your different Seder plate labels and just to remember where everything goes, there's a little cute song that I learned when I was a kid. It goes, Mother in the middle, pizza on the top, Zrawa, Haroset, Hazeret, and Karpas. So I'm going to quickly glue this down. Now, if you do not have Maj Paj, do not worry, because you can just take some Elmer's glue, mix it with water, and even regular, um, regular glue works perfect. I'm also going to take a paintbrush. You can either use a regular paintbrush or a soft paintbrush. I'm going to start. Put a tiny drop. Tiny drop, make sure it's stuck. And then I'm going to put a thin layer over my cup. A very thin layer. You might even want to wear an apron. You don't want the glue to get stuck to you. And now I'm going to place my napkin with the dark side facing the plate. I'm going to pat it down. I chose to do it just on the round part. I did not choose to do the rim. And now you need another thin layer on the top. For the top layer, I'm actually gonna use a softer brush because I don't want it to rip. But if it does rip, I love crafts that there are no mistakes. If it rips, no worries, just cut another extra piece of the napkin and attach it. No big deal at all. Another thin layer on top. I'm gonna wait for it to dry a little bit, and then I'm going to trim my edge. I cannot wait to turn it over to see my product. It will not be perfectly dry because you still see the Maj Paj or the glue, but soon it is going to dry. Now, if I want to design it a little bit more, like I want to see the plastic, so what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna cut thin little strips 
and now tape it to the edge. So I'm going to take my napkin. I'm going to cut thin strips. I'm going to tape them, not tape them, sorry. I'm going to glue them around just like that. I'm going to put them in place. Continue putting it all around. I'm going to continue doing the whole edge. And then you can decide, do you have glitter you want to put on the bottom? I have, I found around the house some of this um, I don't, diamond trim. I'm gonna cut thin little pieces. I could glue it over here to place underneath. Now is when you can get soup, and look how pretty it looks coming out like that. If you really want, you could put it on the top. If you have stickers, if you have ribbon, now's your time to get super creative. Now, if you have a glass or plastic cup, we're going to do something very, very similar. Now, for our Eliyahu Anavi's cup, which is a little more curvy than the plate, is very similar and the napkin will just curve with you. So, I'm going to take some Maj Posh or glue. Glue works totally fine. I then take my napkin and I put it all the way around. It does not fit perfectly because you have extra, but no fear. The napkin will bend so nicely. There's a little extra. We're just gonna trim off the excess. And this is super fun. You're just gonna have it bend. And I actually love the look of the napkin scrunched. It gives it a really, really, really beautiful look. And the part that I really enjoy doing is the bottom. I'm going to cut a round matching flower to the bottom and I'm going to put it over here so it comes through the glass and it has a really beautiful effect. I'm going to put some Maj Paj or glue on the bottom. All right, boys and girls, it's the time you've all been waiting for. Let's find out who our winners from last week's competition is. We got our hat over here. We gotta do a big, big mix up over here. There were over 35,000 kids that entered the competition this week. Can you believe that? All right, here we go. Let's see what we got over here. And our first winner is Caleb Cooperstein from Howard County, Maryland. Well done, Caleb. You are our first winner for this week. Our second winner is, we gotta go deep in here, all the way down to the bottom. Let's get another piece. Our second winner is Bella Halal from Melville, New York. Well done, Bella, good job. And let's get our third winner. Our third winner, who could it be? Let's find out, is none other than Hannah Kibakov from Highland Park, Illinois. Well done, Hannah. And welcome to all our winners, Mazel Tov. See kids, we'll contact you and you have won yourself a gift certificate. All right, boys and girls. Now I have a very special announcement to make for all of you, so listen up. Moms and dads, boys and girls, this year, you might have been learning, or other kids in your Hebrew school might have been learning the incredible JUQ competition. And today, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, you are going to have a chance to watch and find out who the winners from the entire world are. So make sure you'll see on the screen below me, Chabad.org, that's www.chabad.org forward slash JUQ at 3 p.m. log on live to find out who the winners. Get some popcorn, get comfy, and enjoy the show. 
from all of us here at the Sea Kids Virtual Online Hebrew School. We wish you a good week. Stay healthy. Shalom.